All right, well, welcome to another adventure here in Pennsylvania. And as you can tell by the title of the video, we are looking for the Hermit of Mount Penn. Well, he's not alive anymore, but we're searching for where he used to live. And I'm right near uh, Reading, Pennsylvania, here in Berks County. So I'm hiking the trails here on Mount Penn. There's a number of mountain bike trails. I've already seen some interesting uh, steps and stone walls and stuff. I'll show you that in a moment. But I'm going to a place that's called Kutchler's Roost. That's, his, that's a guy's last name. His name was uh, Jacob Kutchler. It's a familiar spot here to locals, but I've never been there. It's a cool little story, and i got some pictures to show you what he looked like and what his little place looked like. And there is one little thing left up here from, from his... Uh, time up here in the mountains a little abandoned wine cellar and he, he was up here up here in the late 1800s 1880s 1890s i think he died in 1904 so i'm gonna quick show you some of the things i'm seeing here on my way to the rust the roost yeah so down here just off the trails a neat looking stone wall going all along down there and i'm not sure how far it goes out there but there are Bunch of stone steps up here as well. I'll show, get, I'll show these to you in a moment up here. Backtrack a little bit. They're pretty cool. You hear some of the steps I was talking about. Not entirely sure if they were four, but they see they continue kind of on up there. But just over in there was that stone wall is. So there's a lot more in this area to explore. I'm just gonna be at this one spot spot in mind for today though. It's kind of late afternoon on Tuesday. All right, let's go find uh, Kutchler's Roost. Yeah, so check it out. Even this trail I'm walking on here, you can kind of tell it was almost like a, you know, cobblestone at one point. It's not just some random mountain trail. Yeah, you can see the other edge of it right there. So this was an old road going up here at one point. That's kind of cool. All right, so I'm pretty sure I found it already up here. I was a little unsure. There's a lot of trails zigzagging around up here. But I think I can see something way up there. So we'll head up there. We'll be up there shortly. I do have some... Uh, more mail to shell to shell to share with you. I got two more packages in the mail yesterday. Packages full of yummies. So I'll show you those. I didn't. Well, I didn't bring all. It was a bunch of food and snacks, and I, I brought samples of those packages. I didn't bring the whole thing. It'd be way too much to bring along. But it looks pretty cool up there. All right, Kutchler's Roost. And we'll talk about this guy in a little bit. Kind of. A, Kind of a cool little character he is. Well, he was a little. He was actually pretty tall, over six foot. Oh, yep. Yeah. All right. Yes, like I said, it's up right there. Is his wine cellar, and even over in there, I see an old foundation up in there. So we might walk around a little bit up here. There's some other things I want to try and find up here. Maybe we'll see. But here's Kutchler's Roost. They do have a little uh plaque for it here. There's Kutchler's Roost. I guess it, Kutchler's Roost. I guess I'm saying that correctly. Kutchler. And there's a picture of what he looked like. I have another picture in a book I'll show you as well. And here's his roost. It's where he lived up top here. Of course there's his wine cellar. And there's a picture of the new roost. After he died they built a new one. We'll talk more about what the roost was in a little bit as well. But the new one burned down. But here's his wine cellar. That looks pretty cool. All right, so let's go check this out.
All right, well, let's go in here together then. I've already been down in there, as you can see, and it's pretty cool. I had to change all my battery. The battery's my flashlight, but I think we'll be okay now. All right, let's back up just a little bit so you can see the entrance. Get that cool curved look to it. I've never seen I've never seen one quite like this. It's got like a little entrance. Some steps going down in. And it's got like another another little entrance way down into a lower level. Yeah, it has a typical look of other wine cellars or spring houses I've been in in the past. Got some hooks hanging from the wall. So this one was built in 1882. A little bit of trash in here, as to be expected. A little, a little hole up to the top there. Oops. Yeah, there's some like carpet in here and stuff, but there's looking out the back, or out the front, I should say. That's a pretty cool look with the light coming in, shining on the steps there. So in some ways, this place is pretty typical of a lot of the uh, cellars and spring houses that I find, like I said, but each one is kind of unique and this one is unique as well. It has like the entrance on the outside and you come down into this lower entrance or lower part. Pretty cool though. This is a wine cellar though. This is where Jacob Kutchler store all his wine and he had a lot of it, which we'll talk about that in a moment. I'll shine a flashlight around a little bit more in here. Check things out. And once again, there's looking to the outside world. Just a neat little spot in here. Not terribly big. Maybe I'll put the camera up at the top of the steps and give you a, a viewpoint of what it looks like with me walking around down in here. Let's do that. All right, so let's go down in again, and I'll shine my light around here so you can see what it kind of looks like for perspective, how big it is. So let me tell you a little bit of history about this guy and why he built this place up here and just some other interesting stuff about him. I think we will take another look at this before I leave. I just noticed where the uh, the door hinges are on there and it is starting to crack, fall apart in some places. It's, it's in surprisingly good condition. There's a lot of trash, like I see a lot of broken glass. Um, I'm sure they've cleaned it up pretty good in the past. We're not too far from Redding. <laughs> here in Berks County, Pennsylvania, and Reading is not a, the nicest place in the world, so I'm sure this place has gotten vandalized in the past. But anyway, um, oh yeah, and I do have some pictures to show you. I know we saw a picture of the guy over there on that information board, but I got a, I got a better picture of him in this in this book down here. Hold on a second. This, this is a pretty good book, Lost Mount Penn. I got it at Barnes & Noble if you're interested in history of this area. Still learning a lot about even my home area around here. But anyway, I'm rambling too much. Um, so Jacob... Jacob is from Germany. He was born in 1830. He came over here with his wife in 1854. Um, they're not really sure what happened to her. The last reference to her was in 1874. And uh, he moved up here on top of this mountain, Mount Penn. Let me get my cheat sheet. I forget what, day, what year he moved up here. Um, anyway, I can't really tell. I can't read my own scribble there. But anyway, at some point he bought some land up here and he moved up here. Um, he wasn't, he wasn't like a true hermit. He did have friends that came up here. There was a whole group of guys. They had a, they had a name. They were called the Foos Gangers, him and some buddies. And he he would entertain people up here. He had like, it was like an inn, almost like a Swiss inn, they called it. He would have dinners and banquets up here. Lots of wine <laughs> and beer and stuff like that. Lots of food. So he didn't, he wasn't a true hermit or a true recluse. Something in between, perhaps, kind of like that. So as you can see, a lot of people did come up here to visit him at different times. You know, he entertained a lot of people. It's almost kind of like an inn that he had here, like I said. 
and you saw that, that kind of like a stone lined, that stone road you walked in on. So that was the main way that people came up here. I know there was an old log book of all the guests that came to visit him, but I think it got destroyed in a fire. His He died in 1904, and his place, I think you saw a picture of it over there, but I have a picture of it in a book here. His place was torn down, I believe, and they built a, a different one, a more modern roost for people to come to, but that one burned down as well. And I think the log book was in that fire and it got destroyed. So, But now it's just back to this woods and stuff. It's an interesting story. All right, I'm going to show you some pictures in the book of pictures of him, what this place looked like in the new place, and then there's a place I want to find where him and his buddies were like in these rocks, and they had like their heads poking out of the rocks and stuff. So anyway, I'm going to quit rambling, and I'll show you those pictures. All right, so here's a pretty good picture of him. He smoked a lot of tobacco, they said, which is probably one reason why he died in 1904, they mentioned. Smoked copious amounts of tobacco. There's a cool-looking shot of him. Always wore that rugged-looking hat. Like a Swiss hat, I guess. Look at that beard. I just trimmed my beard recently. All right, let's look at some more pictures. Once again, here's a picture of what his roost looked like. I think you can see him sitting there on a chair. Just a very simple place, but like I said, he, he entertained a lot of people up here. I think that's what kind of made it attractive some to some people is its ruggedness. Not a bad looking place. And here's a picture of those rocks I want to find. You can see him, he's standing up top there. And there's all his friends standing in the rocks. That's nearby here somewhere. Wouldn't mind finding that. And here's a picture of the roost that replaced his. You can kind of see his wine cellar right there yet. Whoops. And that was a new one. It was designed to look like a Swiss uh, building, I guess they call it Swiss chalet or something like that, or how they say that word. But there's the wine cellar, it's still here. But like I said, this one burned down as well. So from that last picture we saw, you know, there's the wine cellar. That new roost was over there somewhere. That's probably where his original one was. So we might walk up there in a bit to see if there's any foundations up there. I'm going to walk around a little bit more while I'm up here because I want to show you some uh, mail that I got too. But I want to show you, uh, like I said, I saw the door. You can see the old door hinges on here. The door would swing closed and shut. There's one down there. They're all here. And there's another one there. And I want to show you too, it, it is starting to crack. You can see a big crack running all down the whole length. So unless they uh, repair this at some point in time, this is going to be in danger of collapsing. This is a cool piece of history. And while I'm here quick, I do want to share some more mail that I got. I stopped by the post office yesterday and there was two packages for me. They put that little slip in your mail, in my little mailbox I open up the key and that little slip means there's a package because it's too big to fit in the in the uh, my little mail slot. But the first package is from, uh, from Margaret. She sent me a nice card, had some nice kind words in there for me. But she's I think she's the one that asked me what kind of candy I like. And I told her I like black licorice, so she sent me a whole bag of the black licorice. I didn't bring the whole bag along. It's pretty heavy. It's the Twizzlers brand, which is good enough for me. I know there's some other, there's all kinds of brands of black licorice, but I do enjoy my black licorice. I know uh, black licorice is one of those things that divides humanity, like politics and religion. Some people love black licorice and some people hate it. I happen to be one of the people that loves it, so you can you can judge me. So thank you, Margaret, for the black licorice. It is appreciated. And then I got a, I got a package from a, from Marty. And uh, in there was lots of food. There's a whole bag of these little chocolates, little mini chocolates, all the Hershey's, all the Snickers, Three Musketeers, Twix, all the little miniature ones. So that that's much appreciated. I love chocolate. And also a whole bunch of beef jerky. I love my beef jerky. I usually take it along on trips. And this one had different flavors. Like I brought along the bacon flavored one. So I'm gonna try that in a little bit. See what the bacon flavored jerky tastes like. So th thanks again, Marty, for those gifts. 
the food is definitely appreciated. So, all right, I'm gonna open this up and try it out for you in a bit. All right, so I did open it up. I got it open. So on camera taste test. This is the bacon flavored one. So let's see what this tastes like. Mmm. It's kind of mixing with that black licorice taste from earlier. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's good stuff. All right, thanks, Marty. And that pack, it's all different flavors of beef jerky, too, so I'm, I'm talking a mouthful, but... All right. I'm going to sit here and enjoy this for a little bit. All right, well, I'm going to continue to explore around here a little bit more. I was exploring a little bit more off camera while I was eating some of the snacks. Um, so you're welcome to hang out with me a little bit longer, or, or not. You can choose to, to leave at this point if you want to, but I'm going to keep on uh, exploring. I did, like I said, popped over the ridge. There are some foundations over there, and there's some right up here. So just a little bit longer, I want to walk around. I would like to see if I could find those rocks, like I said, where there's, there's if not one pitch where the guys were staying around in. So let's go a ways up behind here, not too far and see the first foundations. Yeah, so there's our a wine cellar, and right back in here would have been that newer roost that they had built. There are indeed some foundations back up this way. Yeah, you can see some kind of foundation there, but down, down in here is where that building was. I'm seeing kind of foundations over there, Seen like a straight edge all along here. So that's where that building was. We may go down there in just a little bit. Yeah, I'm down below now, looking at that foundation. You can see the row of stonework, and there's stonework up there. I'm not sure if his, if the new roost was built on top of his old old shanty looking one. The stonework looks more from the 1800s rather than early 1900s, but I'm not 100% sure. Looks like an interesting little thing up there. Yeah, so there's that stone wall and up there's, those look new. Are they, those have mortar, mortar in them. Holding those rocks together while this wall down here doesn't. So it makes me think that that's part of the newer one. The newer building that was up here. Well, newish. Wouldn't be considered new anymore. All right, so there are foundations and cellar holes everywhere around here. I'm going to turn you around. Here's another cellar hole down here. Just, you know, I don't really know what it was, but it used to be a building here. So I'm going to, I'm going to walk around. Let me turn you around here again. I'm going to walk around a little bit more again. I keep saying that. I keep... I know I keep seeing other things. There's other foundations I haven't showed you yet, but I am definitely coming back here in the future, just to, maybe this spring. This is February 11th. It's actually a really warm day, but there's a ton of stuff up here. I gotta do a lot more research on this place up here. It's my first time here on Mount Penn. Like, uh, recently I've been exploring what's called Neversink Mountain, which is to the south of here, and there's so much stuff up there. I've been up there quite a few times, and Mount Penn has tons of stuff. But I'm learning. I got that one book, and uh, I know there's a, other books, and there's an old railroad up here at one point, so all kinds of cool history to explore. So I'll come back in the spring when maybe some wildflowers are blooming and a little bit warmer. See what else we can find. It's just loaded with stuff up here. Anyway, I'm going to walk around just a little bit more off camera. If I find anything really cool, I'll show you, but at some point I'll be back here a little bit to say goodbye. All right. Of course, I wonder if this was that rock pile in the picture. Seen a number of rock piles around here. It's probably the biggest one, but I'll probably take a picture of it and compare it to the one in the book. And there are rock piles everywhere around here. Just saw a bunch of deer down there. Of course, they ran off. And I like those ones that I saw. If you watch that video when I was, I did the, uh, Stone Fort Trail down Maryland, and those deer were like super tame. They didn't run away from me at all. They're just like 30 feet away from me. 
Those deer don't get hunted. The ones here do. I just saw a tree stand back there. So these deer are a little bit more wary, wary of humans. They ran away from me. That's all right. As you can kind of see, they're called white-tailed deer because when they run, their tail is white underneath and it flashes up and you can see it as they run through the woods. All right, well, I'm going to head back to the, the wine cellar, take one last look at it, and then I'm going to start heading back. All right, so definitely an awesome place back there. I love finding places like this. And I will definitely be back here in the future here on Mount Penn. You know, if you know of any cool places up here that you'd like me to visit, go ahead and mention them to me. Uh, this is my first time here. Oops, let me adjust myself here on Mount Penn. So I know there's going to be a whole lot more of other things to see. Like I said, I do have that one book that mentions some other places up here. But like I said, if you have, you know, if you're a local and you know something really cool, go ahead and point it out to me down in the comments below. So much to see up here. And I'm kind of, there's tons of trails up here, so it might be a cool place to hike this spring, look for wildflowers and stuff, while we're looking for foundations and ruins as well. But anyway, thanks for coming along. Thanks for the gifts. My mailing address is down below in the, in the description. I, I guess I do like getting mail. Of course, my other information is down there as well, my email and my, my Patreon information if you want to support me that way. It does help me to make these trips and stuff. All right. It is a beautiful day here for February. It's We're really spoiled this winter. It's just been really mild. But anyway, I'm going to head home, finish some more of that beef jerky on the way home as well. All right. Thanks for coming along. I'll see you around.